Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States, and one of the main risk factors is high blood pressure. More than 122 millions in America have high blood pressure, starting as young as their 20s. Hi, I'm Dr. Lloyd Anderson from Thrive and Functional Medicine, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about blood pressure and give you at least five tips with a few bonuses on things you can do to help get your blood pressure down. Blood pressure is not usually a genetic condition, although there could be rare cases where it might be connected. It is a lifestyle condition. And they call it the silent killer because usually people don't know they have high blood pressure. It doesn't make you feel bad. It doesn't make you sick. But if it's there, it is absolutely increasing your risks for all kinds of things, not least of which is heart disease. So let's talk about what is going on here and some tips. So you need to have pressure to get the blood circulating all through, all the way through your body and especially up to your brain. And that's what blood pressure does. So having blood pressure is good. Your blood pressure responds to the needs. So if you have greater need, you're going to have greater pressure, such as with heavy activity or exercise or with increased stress. Your pressure is going to go up because your body's supplying your brain and your heart and your vital organs with increased oxygenated blood to function. That's great. But if it's there all the time, it causes significant damage. So there's two numbers on your blood pressure reading. The top one, which we call systolic blood pressure. The bottom one we call diastolic. What that means is systolic is the pressure when your heart is squeezing. That's the pressure that when everything's being push through your circulation, that's the top pressure. The bottom one is what we call the resting pressure. The diastolic is the pressure at rest. They're both important. Probably of the two, I would say the older we get, the diastolic is actually more worrisome in terms of health risks. But you want to keep both of them in a normal range. Now, what is a normal blood pressure? Well, we often say 120 over 80 is a normal blood pressure. But there is definitely a range on what's normal, and it depends on your body size, what you're doing, and your needs. So if you're a high-performance fighter jet pilot, you need higher blood pressure. If you are a small person who sits mostly at a, at a chair, you need much lower blood pressure. So don't think of blood pressure as a number that doesn't change, like your height or even your weight, which is pretty stable. It's a number that changes frequently in response to the needs of your body, which is normal. But if it's high consistently, and technically I, I consider high blood pressure anything over 140, over 90 on a very consistent basis. We label it stage one, stage two, stage three, based on how high it gets. But if it's consistently higher than that, you should be doing something. So ready for it? Here are the tips. Tip number one is minimize or avoid caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant and it's often the cause of high blood pressure. Now that doesn't mean everybody has to give up caffeine, settle down, relax. But if you do have high blood pressure, cutting out caffeine can make a big big difference. So just try it. Try it for a week or two. Now you might go through caffeine withdrawal, but if you can get off blood pressure medication and avoid heart disease, it is worth it. You might also have less heartburn and sleep better, by the way, just added um, added uh, pro tips there. Okay, number two, avoid certain medications, especially some over-the-counter medications that can drive up your blood pressure. What are those? Well, cold medications is a big one. Decongestant type medications. Those things that have decongestants often will raise your blood pressure. Another real big common cause of over-the-counter blood pressure uh, medications that cause elevated blood pressure are the anti-inflammatories. That's like ibuprofen, Advil, Aleve, etc. Now, if you need to take those occasionally because you have some pain or headache, fine. But if you're taking them on a daily basis, they very well may be actually causing your high blood pressure. There are other things that can contribute, certain pain medications, um, and many other medications can contribute as well. But those are the big ones that I like people to think about. All right, tip number three, get movement every day. And in fact, some people see that it's better to get a little bit of movement spread throughout your day than it is to just go to the gym for 30 minutes or an hour. So maybe you can get up and go for a five or 10 minute walk multiple times a day. The more we get up and move, the more it helps our cardiovascular system to reset and allows the blood pressure to move. Now, I do recommend brisk exercise for at least 20 minutes if you can, at least three to four times a week, if not even daily, because the higher your heart rate gets during a, uh, an exercise session, the better it's going to help your blood pressure. Now, if you take your blood pressure while you're exercising, it's going to be high because that's what it's supposed to be. But afterwards, when you recover, it should be lower. So exercise is a huge one to help get your blood pressure regulating. All right, tip number four, get good sleep 
every night. When we sleep poorly, when our sleep is compromised or diminished, we're not getting enough quality or enough quantity of sleep, we're more tired. One of the ways our body compensates is to raise blood pressure. So if you're consistently having sleep problems or you have high blood pressure, think about what's going on with your sleep. Sleep apnea is often an undiagnosed cause of high blood pressure. Well, that's where functional medicine asking, why do you have high blood pressure? Sleep apnea might be the cause. So treat it, address it, improve your sleep. All right. And by the way, pro tip, work on breathing through your nose. If you're breathing through your mouth, it has all kinds of negative consequences, including on your blood pressure that's connected with the sleep apnea. I might have to do one of these on sleep apnea. It's such a big problem. All right. Number five, the biggest reason why I see my patients having high blood pressure is chronic stress. Because when we're under stress, our body raises blood pressure to help cope or respond. That's a normal response. But the problem is we stay in that stress response for 24-7, 365, leaving our blood pressure elevated, never coming down. So address your response, uh, stress response, but work on what we call your stress response cycle. Callie did a great video on this recently. We've done lots of other videos, shared tips to manage stress. So go back through some of those previous videos if you need some help to work on stress. All right, those are the five main tips. And I want to give you a couple extra bonuses here in our last couple minutes. Number one, work on pain. Another really big cause of high blood pressure is chronic pain. If we're in pain, blood pressure raises as a compensation, as a result in your body. So if you can work on your pain, that's going to help your blood pressure. So that might mean going to physical therapy. It might be doing an anti-inflammatory diet. It might be doing... Um, you know, some kind of treatment for your pain. We have some treatments here that we do for pain as well that can help. If your pain goes down, usually your blood pressure goes down. That's that's bonus number one. All right, bonus number two is there are certain supplements that can help lower blood pressure, and there are some supplements that raise blood pressure too. So you want to avoid those. That in particular is, is licorice root. Licorice root, which is great for lots of things, it can actually raise blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure, you need to be cautious about supplements that have licorice root or even drinking licorice root tea for some people. There are other supplements that help lower blood pressure. Magnesium is a big one. Um, most people are deficient in magnesium and getting that optimal will help blood pressure. Uh, anything that supports nitric oxide production, which again, exercise is a great way to do that, but there are supplements that help support nitric oxide is going to lower your blood pressure. And finally, I'm going to recommend a specific supplement. I don't often do this because I want you to work on lifestyle first, but I have seen good results with this with a lot of our patients. This is a supplement called Cardatone, and it's by a company called Ayush Herbs, which is an, it's a kind of an Ayurvedic blend of plant-based suppl uh, supplements that can help lower blood pressure. So I've seen this work pretty well for some people. Now, if you have severely high blood pressure, you need to treat it. Please treat it, even if it means taking medication, but then work on all the other things to get your blood pressure down. And then my final bonus number, I guess this is our third extra bonus, is get your blood sugar regulated. Because if you have uncontrolled high blood sugar, or AKA diabetes, your blood actually gets more viscous. That means it gets more thick. So think about this example. If you're trying to push syrup through a small tube versus water through a small tube, which one is going to take more pressure, more force? Well, of course, the syrup, right? If you have diabetes, your blood gets more viscous. It's like pushing syrup through a tube instead of water. So getting your blood sugar under control, getting it regulated, getting it optimal is going to help your blood pressure. In fact, oftentimes, again, blood pressure comes as a result of things like diabetes. So there are a bunch of tips for you guys. I hope that helps a lot. Please share if you have any comments or questions. And if there are things you want to hear more about, we are here to support you. Remember, you are never alone and you are loved. See you next time.